Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Welcome and Housekeeping presentation, Mary welcomes the participants to the Assistance Group and outlines the general plan for the program along with providing some general principles for participants to follow. Recorded on the 3rd of June, 2016, in Newseville, Queensland, Australia. But if your bed gets wet, test the emotions, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Once, I, had, I used to be so bad with that, hey? And um, another travel story. We, when I was uh, at university, Oh, before I went to uni, I went on student exchange for you to Venezuela. And um, after that, I wanted to go back and my family were like, yeah, we want to come too. So we all, <laughs> yeah, that's my family. Um, <laughs> and you translate for us. <laughs> and if there's no hot water and we're yelling at the manager, you translate that. You're the daughter. That's, that happened. It wasn't fun. <gasps> Agua caliente. Like <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I used to get so, like, I can't cope. If there's, if, you know, my comfort zone was pretty, like, little. And we climbed Machu Picchu. When I say my comfort zone, I'm happy camping and stuff, but there were certain things, right, that if, if we're outside that parameter, like, no food for too long or very cold without, you know, comfort, or, or like, I had an ex-boyfriend who was like, you get that look, and I know we need to get you food now. <laughs> but um, we were hiking Machu Picchu, um, and we were like halfway up altitude. I got altitude sickness. I lost like five kilos because I just didn't eat for a week. Nothing. I was nauseous the whole time. Um, anyway, we got we got to this one place, and you know we were. Western tourists, so we're hiking with our little packs, but there's Sherpa guys who are doing the, you know, the tents and stuff for us. Anyway, something happened with them, and we got to this place one night, and they, the Sherpas didn't arrive. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was cold and raining, kind of like this. We were high in the mountains, it was getting dark, and Mary hit the point of like, no, not good. And my mother saw it and she was like, right, we've got to act. Because <laughs> my mother doesn't like anyone feeling any extreme emotion. So, so she kind of got this weird mother hen thing going and she, she broke in. We were a group, we were a group of tourists, so about, I don't know, 40 or something, 50. And she, there was a, like a kind of a national park, Peruvian uh, government, whatever. They had this big building there and she's like, that's it. We're breaking in. My mother, <laughs> she didn't break glass, it was wooden shutters or something, but she got in. And the guide, the guide's like, you can't do that. Like, that's illegal. <laughs> nah, mum. She was in, climbed through the window, went around, opened the lock. All 50 tourists, it was, <laughs> it was beautiful. Actually, it was kind of a really magical night because everyone, no one had a bed and everyone was just sort of sitting around and meeting each other and eating their little Mars bar snack or whatever they had on them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Mary and the former um, emotional limit, lack of discomfort, at, like Earth has to move because Mary doesn't want to feel an emotion. <laughs> I've gotten better. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. <laughs> but don't think I don't know what it's like when you hit that limit. Because <laughs> I have many times. How are we going for people, Ello? Still four or seven. There's five, but um, one might not be arriving until tomorrow. Okay, we're just not sure. Well, it's seven, so I reckon we should start. Everyone, was there a bit of a mix-up about the starting time? Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Yes, I don't know how that happened, but seven o'clock is when we were planning to see you. And as I said to someone just before, I only arrived at 20 past five, so um, six might have been pushing it a little bit for me anyway, so. Welcome. Welcome to Developing My Loving Self. 
your opportunity to learn all about this subject. Who's feeling excited? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a wonderful group, hey? And um, Jesus just presented the entire group to the first group <laughs> of people last week and um, a lot of people found it quite impactful that they got a lot from it and um, I think... I hope that I think that you will too if you come with your willingness, with your will engaged and your present. I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. We we went through quite a bit organizing this material. We actually had four goes at it because as you've probably noticed if you've read your outlines, there's quite a lot of material. And we wanted <laughs> I was seeing someone's print out there. Hold it up. It's like, it's like a book, yeah. Um, but all of the stuff that we, we've got in there we feel is really valuable to, to help you grow a self-awareness and awareness of these issues. And, and, um, but as you can imagine, faced with all of those things that we wanted to share with you, putting it into an order that wouldn't be utterly overwhelming and confusing, because obviously when you just encountering the information for the first time you can can hear one thing and then go but how does it apply to the other thing and it can it can get really confusing so we went through three previous attempts before we finally hit on this this timetable that we've got for you and yeah i think it's it's put together well jesus has made this amazing uh flow chart <laughs> uh for you all and um i'll let him explain it all to you starting tomorrow morning. So obviously I'm here, <laughs> which wasn't planned. And um, I'm going to be just giving you a welcome. And also I'll probably be talking to you guys at in, during the program where we have summary and homework and review and stuff like that. So that will be my role among other behind the scenes things. But Jesus will be presenting to you the main content and the main material. But he's just having a rest tonight, so that's good, eh? Yeah. Give him a chance to have a rest. Yeah, yeah. So my purpose here is to welcome you, which we did off camera and a little bit now on camera. But um, I was asking how many of you have travelled a really long way to get here. So can you show us again? Because we want to welcome you guys. Or oh, how long is long? It's hard in Australia, isn't it? Who's come internationally? Yeah. So quite a lot. Thank you, guys. I hope you uh, make some new friends as well uh, while you're here, as well as finding the material really worth your while. I think, as I said to someone before we started, I think, you know, if you really come with your intention, I reckon you'll get quite a bit out of it. It's a good one to come to, actually. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is right where everyone feels challenged, feels a bit bogged down. Sometimes we talk about the broader issues and it's really inspiring and then we get to some of this stuff and it can feel heavy, you know. And so that's why it's great to come to this group because it gives you lots of tools and lots of insights. So, yeah. Who's come a long way within Australia? So let's say over 200 Ks. Well, gosh, that's probably nearly everyone. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Who's come interstate? Interstate. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thanks for making the effort. And who are the locals? Uh, from the tropics. <laughs> welcome, everyone. It's great to have you. I also want to go through um, with you guys just the logistics, the nuts and bolts of... Because some of you haven't been to this venue before. And some things we also want to talk to that are a little bit different from the first group that you would have done. And so I'll just run through all of that, hopefully remind us all why we're here as well and um, what the opportunities are. From our perspective, it's always a pleasure to see you guys and especially um, to see you guys engaging with, with this material that we love so much. It's really lovely to meet new people that we haven't met before. Um, but it's equally nice to see the ones we already know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have 
favorites as such. Well, maybe a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Oh, now I've got myself off track. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, and our team is, so I'll be here presenting a little bit this time. Jesus will do the bulk of it. Lena and Igor, as usual, our wonderful um, production team. Kelly and Cornelius are going to be doing the videoing. The, um, yep. And Eloisa is helping out with a few logistical things as well. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, in terms of this room, basically um, the toilets, does everyone know where they are? No. So you have to go out the back door, around through the cafe, and basically the toilets are actually just here, um, but we've blocked off the door so that um, the noise doesn't interfere with the recording. So if you, if you imagine spatially now, you can't see them, but you're going around through the cafe and there's a little corridor, there's a signage that says toilets. So we'll give you a toilet break every hour, but of course you can go more than that if you want. But um, we decided to do that so that, you know, you have regular breaks and have a chance to get up and think about things. If you can, while you're in the room, be aware of the fact that we are video recording. So there's a lot of opportunities for you guys to love within that. So that is to be conscious of not walking in front of these front cameras because that obviously blocks the main view, not walking in front of the other cameras either, um, and also being aware when you get the microphone to ask a question to see if you can see the camera operator because if you can't, they might not be able to see you and they will indicate if you need to stand up. They'll ask you with a point of a finger, please stand up. And so stand up and, and say your question. And hold on to the mic while Jesus is responding to you so that because um, sometimes there's a back and forth and so on. This is really important stuff. And if you guys well, you saw the recordings from group one, I thought the production was just so lovely. And we want to continue to improve it. And so if you guys can help out by making sure you're visible to the camera, you all know what it's like when you can see someone who's asking the question versus when you're kind of, they're hidden behind someone else. It's much nicer, isn't it? And you get much more of a feel for what's going on. And yeah, so it's, it's partly, it's part of you loving the people who will come after you, the people who will watch the, the end result. Catherine? Great segue to my next point, Sorry. which is about microphones. Uh, it's Kelly doing this side and Corny doing that side. No, they're no? both doing you right now. <laughs> well, maybe I should stand up. <laughs> Did they point? If they didn't point, you're all right. No, yeah. no. No, they both, because it is a bit tricky in some spaces in the room to get the shot, both cameras, when someone actually has the microphone, both cameras are trained on that person so that Eagle has the possibility, if one can't get it, the other one can and he can switch between them. Right. Does that mm -hmm. make sense to everyone? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No worries. So let's talk about microphones. Um, basically, when you raise your hand, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Pete. Well, you could be the dummy if you like, the, the tester. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Pete, I'm the dummy. our life runner. No, not, not in an intellectual sense. But. Um, wait until someone selects you before you take the microphone. So, myself or Jesus. Well, you probably won't be given it before then. Um, and when you're speaking in the microphone, it's really important, guys, yes, <laughs> to hold it. Away, f so exactly as Pete is holding it, perhaps just slightly closer, depending on how loud your voice is. But you can hear, you can hear when the speaking is going on, whether it's audible. And um, so you want to make sure it's held it's kind of at 45 degree angle to your chin um, and speak up so that you're heard. Yeah. There's another issue of love for not only the production, but also for the presenter who, if they can't hear you, they have to waste time <laughs> kind of going, oh, could you please? Thanks, Pete. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yes, no yes. Is, yeah, thank you. 
Yeah. So if it's out there, no one can hear you. If it's there, no one can hear you. You, ha you have to have kind of like a, I don't know the technical term for that, but you know, <laughs> a connection with the microphone. Um, you're, not, you're not trying to transmit like other frequencies. It's your voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, if you can hold the microphone well, and honestly, guys, if, if it's an ongoing issue, you're not going to get that microphone again. <laughs> we just, if Jesus has to address it with you more than once, you know, then he just won't select you for a question. Because one of the things that I really want to stress to you guys about um, the whole program is that because there is just so much in it and um, because there's so many valuable things <laughs> to learn, we don't want to waste time. Like, not only is it just an issue of, a lack of love on the person's part if they're continually having to be reminded of an issue. But also, it's like time spent, um, just wasted, really. And again, if you think about the production, when you're sitting at home wanting to watch it, if you're hearing every five minutes the microphone, the microphone, the mi it's sort of distracting as well from the whole flow. So that's an important issue. Which probably I should... Uh, now I'm... Yeah, let me just talk about some more logistics and then we'll get on to some more um, kind of issues of love. If you have hard disk drives that you would like copied, we are offering that service. So if you do, if you could leave them on this table over here where the water cooler is, um, and we'll collect them and update them. So where Eloisa is there, on this side of the room basically, and if you can indicate whether you have a PC or a Mac, if, if, if it's a new disk, if it's already got stuff on it, we're going to put keep the same formatting. Okay. And once it's done, it'll be placed on the opposite side, so where your folders are in the donation boxes. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? No? Nope. Cool. Okay, what else? Uh, we've done mics, we've done hard disk drives. Basically, you have this opportunity to love while you're here. So the you have the opportunity to um, love yourselves by being present, taking care of yourself, you know, getting to bed, making space for, for all these things you're learning. But also, obviously, there's the opportunity to love the venue. So taking care of this physical venue, not leaving stuff lying around. Obviously, it's an act of love to do the same in your accommodations, to not leave it, you know, in terrible repair or whatever. Also to love each other. So to own your staff and not be projecting, not demanding others enter into addictions with you or commiserate with you. Um, and, of course, to love Jesus and I as the presenters. So there's a, it is a big program, as I said, and partly I'm here because um, Jesus needs a little bit of a rest at the moment. So if you can be conscious of not trying to take his time before and after the sessions, not, not getting um, demanding or, you know, wanting extra, he's already given out so much in, in the delivery, so, and it, which is his pleasure, his absolute pleasure, but if you can just be conscious that he needs some downtime as well at the end of the day and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, all right, I, I think I've done the physicality stuff, the water, yeah, sorry, just Pete. one other thing, Mary, like with the breaks and that um, Jesus asked not to go up and talk to him during yes, the breaks. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thanks, Pete. I'll get on to the, the program itself in a minute too. But yes, you're right. Just if you can give him time to actually have a break in the breaks because they're for him as well as you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the other thing is water. So we made an arrangement with the venue when we came to have water, drinking water here available um, for you guys in the room. And they actually offered th that to us for free. However, in the first round of groups, um, there was so much used that they no longer want to offer it <laughs> to us for free. Um, and this is a bit of an issue of love where 
something's offered for free and then everyone wants to kind of take advantage of it because it's free and it ends up meaning that we pay for it, <laughs> uh, you know. And in fact, you're paying for it through your donations now, we pay for it. But the, the purpose of the water in the room is so you have water, fresh, nice water to drink while you're in the room. Um, so when you go back to your room, in the, uh, you know, before this day starts and after the day finishes, water is your responsibility. So if you can just keep that in mind, that would be great. It, but it's it's an emotion, isn't it, to to have a feel about this? Oh, it's free, so let's hog it. You know, <laughs> it's a pretty common one. I, I I don't know. In Australia, it seems a pretty common one. <laughs> um, I, people in my family pick up something, even if it, they don't need it, just because it's free. So yeah, so just something to be aware of. Okay. So have you all seen the printout of the program? So, you know, we've got three sessions. Each session is two days long and there's a break between session one and session two of a day. Now, within each session, you're going to get three or four hours of new material. So, fresh information from Jesus. And then after each of those, each of those is about an hour long, you have the opportunity usually to have a full hour of questions and answers. So, the issue with the question and answer sessions, the first group we did, was that a lot of people were asking kind of questions really uh, in addiction, I'm just going to say. They wanted, they didn't really want answers, they wanted validation or commiseration or, you know, I'm feeling a bit panicked about what you've just said, could you please make that go away, rather than having sort of a seeking student's heart, if you know what I mean. So we really are going to address that with you guys pretty directly this time. And in fact, we wrote some specific notes about it, which you perhaps have read in your outline, but I'll go, go through them. My suggestion to Jesus was to tell you all that the first sentence out of your mouth needs to end in a question mark. <laughs> Because honestly, you know, as, as I said, I had the chance to watch everything because uh, I wasn't here. And so I was like, oh, there they go again. Just want, and just wanting to just tell the story. And is there a question coming? Are we getting to a question? And so Jesus found that that's not a good use of his time or yours. And in fact, it happened so much that I made some little um, cards for him to save his voice. <laughs> so... One of them says, is there a question coming? <laughs> so if you get the card, you'll know what that's all about. Um, another one says, that's a big whopping story, <laughs> not a question. <laughs> and the old classic, that's just an addiction. <laughs> okay, so um, he did, uh, well, I made them, it was a little bit jokey, when I made them up for him and I said, do you really want to take them? Um, I made them while I was watching the videos of the other, of the last lot. And um, he said, no, no, I'll take them. I don't know if I'll use them. But they did actually come out once or twice in this last group. So you're warned that your questions need to be questions. Okay? And I'll just, did, did someone have a question about that? No. I thought you were raising your hand. No. Uh, I'll just read you a little bit of some of the comments that we did write in our notes. So, yes, a student, someone with the heart of a student wants to learn. They don't want to make their mark or get noticed or, you know, just say, but what about? They, they sincerely want to learn. So that's, we see that this is kind of a student opportunity, it's a learning opportunity here. So if you can, if you can feel about that for yourselves. Um, <laughs> and we, we put in, your first sentence has to end with a question mark. It's not about making statements or sharing things. Mainly because that's usually addictive, but it's also because there's just not enough time, you know, uh, for us all to sort of have a share. Chris? Hi. Um Sorry, Colin. Uh, my question is, what about if I need to provide a context before I actually ask the question? 
Yeah, look, that's, that's okay to a point. But if you've really thought about your question, usually you're going to be asking about a principle. So this is something else that we tried to um, teach you guys about in the first group, which is there's, you know, we can ask questions that are just like, well, last week my dog bit me and then, you know, this happened and then five other people and then the red car and then da-da-da. So what do you think that means? Or do you know what I mean? You can have a big, long context and then ask the question. Or if you think about it, you could think it might be about the law of attraction, for example. Is there a guiding principle to help me understand what I'm attracting in my day-to-day -day life? Now, that's, that's a question that's going to serve you not just for that thing that happened last week, but it will serve you forever. And in, in, after you ask that question, Jesus might say, oh, do you have an example? Would you like to you know, illustrate what you, you, something that you would like to apply that to? And that's different. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we're always loving the questions that pertain to principles because that's going to help you not just in one situation but in many and it's also not just going to help one person, it'll help many people. Um, so that's how we would love for you guys to approach questions. Now, it's, it's, we are pretty strict about it, don't get me wrong, but you don't need to be like, oh, I don't know. you know, <laughs> be yourself. It's okay to be yourself. But really what we're encouraging you to do is to do your homework. And by that I mean literally before you come to the session to have read the outline and have some questions prepared from what you've read. That will make for excellent questions and excellent learning on your part. But also, if you're just listening and a question comes up, do a little bit of your homework before you raise your hand. You know, go, okay, what am I feeling? What, uh, what is that largely about? Okay, and then you can ask your question. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. thanks. Yeah. Okay. It was a good question. Help me illustrate the point. Yeah, yeah. Last group, a, a number of people pre-prepared questions, as we suggested to you guys from the outlines, and it was, it was actually really great. It good, made for really good discussion. And because there is so much content in your outlines, Jesus is not going to be able to cover every single point within your outline. So the other cool thing is, if you find that there's something that wasn't covered in the outline that you feel particularly interested in or something, the Q&A session is a great time to ask about that because it helps kind of broaden out the and develop the lessons that he's presenting in that first you know, information session, if you like. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. Um, and I think that I've said a lot of what we've got here. Yeah, just that there was a lot of selfish questions in the first round of groups. There was a lot of, um, as I mentioned, like projection of rescue me, validate me, all these kinds of things. And, and that is not really asking a question, actually. That's a sort of entering an addiction. So if you can be conscious of that, that would be awesome. And it will make for excellent viewing and learning and the whole thing. Okay, and if you argue with the answer, or if someone is starting to answer your question, you cut them off midway, you do not have an open heart to what's being said, or you're acting in some kind of panic or demand, and we're not going to continue with the question. There were, have been a couple of people who've just... That's been addressed with them a number of times, and they haven't wanted to shift on that, and so Jesus banned them from asking questions but it doesn't need to get to that if you are just reflective. yeah. So basically we're teaching you guys a lot about taking personal responsibility for the use of your will in a loving way. Yeah. So great opportunities, I reckon. Okay. Jesus found that he wasn't able to answer a lot of questions totally because the person was trying to get him off on a tangent or they were cutting him off or sort of like going... But in my case, it's different when really if, if they were patient, if a person is patient, you'll find that because Jesus understands this 
principle versus personal issue, he will often give a hugely broad context that actually once you get down to the narrow end of answering the question, it helps you understand so much better than if he'd just given you a one-liner. But you've got to be patient and let that whole process happen. Okay, cool. So that's your Q&A sessions. Um, got 10 minute breaks in between and a, and a 30 minute break this time in the middle of the day. So that gives you a chance to go and have lunch or return to your room if you want to or, or anything. But at the end of each break, you're gonna hear music playing and that signals that it's time to come back in and take your place. Um, yeah, and if you, being on time is an issue of love. So it, it's pretty logical, isn't it? You know, you're holding other people up or you're disturbing other people if you come in late. So if you can just observe that, that would be fantastic. The other thing in your program is you have the opportunity to receive personal feedback and there will also be group feedback. So if you want to have personal feedback, it must pertain to what we've talked about in the session. And there is a board, uh, two clipboards at the back uh, on the left-hand table to write down your, um, your name, your question, that kind of thing. Is, there, does, is everyone pretty clear on what's required there? It has to pertain to what we're talking about, though. Cool. And what's been happening is some people come up the front and, and have their um, feedback with Jesus personally and he'll let you know beforehand if that's going to happen. Um, other times he's just giving feedback sort of person to person while the person's still sitting in the audience. And sometimes he's just giving broad general feedback. And a lot of people, the feedback that he gave in the last group was, was really um, just very, very helpful, I found, what he shared. It was great tools to assess where you're really at in your progression. So valuable, valuable. But that's me. I shouldn't try and sell it so much. Uh, <laughs> it's just my passion and enthusiasm. But um, yeah, the main thing to know is about the clipboards. Uh, then we'll have a summary and a review and we'll set homework at the end of every session. I'll be doing those sessions with you guys. So Jesus will present the bulk of the day and I'll come up and then um, just go through what were, the, what were the key points we all want to remember and what's your homework for the next session. Then at the start of each new session, we'll review that again and go through your homework. Sound all right? Cool. All right. I reckon we are powering through it. So excuse me, looking at my notes. Yeah. Obviously, guys, if you've got kids, they're your responsibility. I don't know if many people have kids here, do they? And if they are, they're taken care of. Anyone with children who'll be in the room? Nope, nope, okay. Okay, all right, I reckon that's all. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, Igor is signing to me. What is he doing? Sounds like... Yeah, just the phones, if you could switch them off. Oh, yes, yeah, got you, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And um, so if you can turn off your mobile phones while you're in the room. Yeah. I was just, I just started watching the very first group for this year and AJ just mentioned... Um, for everyone to leave the room like as soon as the session is yes of course that's another really important thing okay. and another thing is just to wait till your name is called before you start speaking oh, yeah sorry <laughs> that's all right sorry. um so when you get the mic make sure someone indicates you before you speak otherwise it's very confusing not only for the presenter but also for the camera operators because they're like whoa, whoa whoa who is that they rely a lot on the presenter to say yes whoever's going next yeah Yep, but Ivana brings up a good point. If at the end of the day, there's a lot more that the production team has still got to do. Jesus and Lena and Igor still have quite a bit, few jobs to do. So if you can exit the room um, once we're done for the day, there's loads of place to socialise outside. So um, There's vegan menu at the cafe. I left a copy, I think, of the menu at the back of the room. Yeah, um, so... I'd love to know how it, how it is. We haven't sampled it, but um, yeah, if you do, let us know. Yeah. Okay, Phoebe. Um, when should we have our personal questions written by? Like what, the end of tomorrow or? Uh, right up until 
really, I think, Corny, when have you been giving him the folder? Right up until the, the session before you've got time. Okay. So the, the right up until the lunch break, basically. At the lunch break, he will we'll have a look at it and decide. Does that make sense? The personal truth sessions are after lunch on the second day of the session. And so right up until then, you can write down your questions. Yep. Yeah, cool. All right. Anything else? Ready for bed? Here's Felix. You missed it. <laughs> it's a bit hard at the moment, isn't it? Just with the bad weather and stuff. I understand that. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good night. Jesus will be with you uh, first thing in the morning. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the week with you guys. Yeah. 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 Did you have something? Oh, gosh, that's right. The mic runners, yeah. Were you thinking it as well? Sorry, before everyone goes. Um, basically, we've been encouraging everyone to have a go at being a mic runner. So everyone only needs to have... There's so many people that you just need to do it once for one session. So, um, And it's a really great op opportunity to love and to learn to figure that out amongst yourselves. So, but basically we need uh, two camera operators per session um, and basically your role is to be attentive to what's happening in the room, who's got their hand up. A lot of people find it's really handy to stand or sit right at the back and I think last time we even allocated seats for mic runners at the back and we'll do that again, yeah. So th on the back of the chair will be written mic runner. So if you're a mic runner for that time, uh, that's your chair. And yeah, you, your job is to just um, get the mic to the person as quickly as you can without knocking or running in front of a, uh, a camera or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Have I covered all the bases? Uh, Ivana? Um, I can't remember if you mentioned about name tags, but to put them I back. didn't. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so put them back. I forgot. So everyone, you've got a name tag. If you could please wear it in a visible spot, that's really helpful. There's tons of you, and it's sometimes you just can't remember a person's name off the top of your head. And some of you are brand new, haven't met you. So if you can wear it visibly um, for every session. A lot of people find it's much easier to just take it off as you're leaving the room and put it on as you come in. R otherwise, you might take off your jumper and leave it behind in your room or whatever. And then we won't know who you are and you can't ask any questions and it's the end of the world. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you can just remember to do that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we're done now. <laughs> um, Really, guys, I just feel that I perhaps haven't stressed enough the opportunity to to love and to learn. You know, this is the whole reason we've done this is because we love giving people those opportunities to learn about love and to have opportunities to love each other. So um, we take that seriously. And if we find that you are being really unloving to someone, we will address it because we feel that's the point of being here. Um, and... Yeah, if it, if it continues, we'll, we'll ask you to leave. Um, but, but you have the opportunity, even when it's pointed out, to learn so much, you know, if you embrace that opportunity. So, yeah. All right, guys. Have a good night and uh, we'll see you in the morning.